Hello and welcome to the fifth part of the C Sharp Maze game tutorial. And in the last video we uh what is it? We created our little game loop. And in this video we're gonna create our main menu and pop it into our, into our new loop. So firstly let's create a new class. So for the main menu, so what you see, let's call it main menu. Enter. So there you go. The, at the moment, there's not going to be lots of things in our main menu. There's just going to be the reference to a instance of the user menu class that we made two videos ago. And we're going to need to define some menu items. So let's quickly do that. So firstly, we're going to declare the user menu. So it's simply just going to be user menu. Let's call it menu. And don't you actually assign it here? We do it in, in an initialization function, and then, of course, our user menu takes a list of strings for the menu items. So we just need to create a list of strings. So, so make it. I do public, possibly public uh, menu items. I oh, know list string menu items get private set there we go and then that's that's all we need at the moment and then our there's our initialization function so that's going to be a public void let's call it init and then here you're going to de uh, assign our menu to a as to a new instance of user menu create our menu items so menu items equals new this string and in there we're going to put our items, so new game, load game, we could add this in possibly, uh, credits, and say exit. Then all that's left is to create set, uh, the menu. So we're going to do menu dot create menu items. Oh, position. Now, we could just use the standard uh, top left hand corner because uh, because it's just easiest. But it'd be nice if we could centre it into the screen, and I think we will do that. But firstly, we don't actually know how big the uh, menu is. We could calculate it because we've got our number of items. But if you remember, we've already calculated this in our user menu. Uh, Thingy, so we a waste of uh, processing time. So for, we will firstly set it to the top left hand corner. Ah, I have let's, let's put using system dot drawing in there. Let's get rid of that. Don't need that. There we go. And title main menu. And we'll just leave this stand the stand the colors the same. So now that's center our menu. So we're going to have an interx coordinate which is going to be console.window width divided by 2 because you want the half of the window and we're going to do take away uh, so we've got we've got half of it and you do take away the half of the width of the menu so menu dot menu size dot width dot by two well let's put them back it and the same goes for the y position so y equals console dot window height divided by two minus menu dot menu oops dot menu size height divided by two and there you go all I have to do is update the position. So menu dot position equals new point x y. There you go. Oh, we've got uh, access uh, access accessible. Oh yes. If you remember, in our user menu, we created our position variables private set. We need to change that. 
and then uh, that should hope work. Position set, create. Let's just have a little look. Position, position, equals position. Ah, box create here. Position. We need to update the box position now. Actually, so let's go to our shapes class again, and what is it? Yeah, this this is it. So we need now need to update this. So with that, so there it's box. We need to update the box then, and box inherits from this. And that is public, so yes, that should be okay. So let's go back to our was it main menu? No, user menu. So we need to update, change this. So when we change this position variable, it updates the box. Now, if you remember, well, it's like the first video. I say this is the shorthand version, but now this time we can do the longhand version. So underneath the dialog box, we okay, create a new private a point. Let's call it. Position. Let's put underscore in a bit. Now get rid of the get set in front of the this one, and put get return underscore position, and then set underscore position equals value. Then we've got we've updated that, so we need to update the box uh, thingy. So box dot position equals value. Now hopefully that should work. So check there. Box, yes. So update when you update box and what is box? Dialog box. Go and um, shapes. I'll update that. So hopefully. No, it won't won't. Because yes, it read it, read it. Box is dialog box, so it's updating that position, but that's not going to work, is it? Because it's going to update it for the box. We actually want it for the bot, the dialog box box. So I think the easiest thing to do here is create a, fun a function: so public void update position. Let's put points. Let's put clip p. Then box dot P dot position I mean equals P. This is going to make it a lot easier. So change that because it's a dollar box, so it's box dot update okay, position put value in there. So hopefully that should actually center it. So we'll soon find out. So you close that and then all that's left to do we're going to do next is do the update function and we're going to put this in here so we can actually check which icon is selected so public void update now if you, if you remember the use menu update function was a bool so we could check if the enter key is pressed and the item is selected so obviously we're going to use an if statement here so if menu dot update then we can check what I'm selected. I think we should quickly add this in now. So switch a menu dot selected index. So case so case zero is new game. Break. Case one is load game. I want the same columns on comments. I have no idea. Break. Case. Two is credits break, and finally, case three is exit. Now, to exit a console application, it's as simple as environment dot exit, and then you put an exit code zero because it's, it's returned okay. Then off, you have to put break in there because you just have to, even though it's going to exit the program. So there you go, there's our update. And all this down to is to actually test it. So what we need to do is go over to our game uh, file and we're actually going to need to de declare our main menu.
so I'll go at the top. Just leave it normal accessibility. So main menu, menu, and because it's only going to be one game cast per, uh, per instance of the well for the app, the actual application, you can actually declare it up here. Because new, new menu. There we go. There we have to update. Um, not update. Initialize the menu. So in the game init menu dot init. Then we just need to put the stuff in the game loop. So firstly, we're going to do menu dot draw. No, menu dot menu. I've got main menu. Use menu here. Make it public. And make it do get and private set. There you go. So we can now get the uh, use menu because we need to call the draw function, but we can't actually set it elsewhere than other than our main menu. So menu dot menu dot draw. There you go. Last and not least, we need to do menu dot updates. Now, hopefully, if we compile that, it should win. And so let's test it. Start. Please work. And there you go. And it's sensor did work. Did it? It doesn't look sensor to me, but yes. I thought possibly because of the score bar there. It actually fixed that straight away. Right, so there you go. You can move around. And you see that flicker? Because you can fix that by instead of redrawing the entire menu, we just update things. Which is probably the best thing to do. Uh, we have to probably add it, do it in a later date. So press enter on the, any of the items, so nothing will happen. If you press enter on the exit, hopefully you should exit. And it does, like a dream. So, there you go, I think that concludes our this part of the video. So we have created our main menu, and in the next video, I think we should actually start on cre a creating our game, the actual game bit. So, see you next time.